Today, we're going to be making explosions for our games. It's Bimsy Devs here, and I'm back with another tutorial. So this is what we're going to be making today. All right, well, let's skip to it and get straight into the code. Starting out, I've added a third person character controller to my scene. You'll be able to find this asset on the asset store. A link for that will be in the description down below. Although you don't need this character controller set up to get the explosions working. The first thing I'll do is create two scripts, the grenade script and the grenade spawner script. With that done, we can go ahead and jump into the code. So inside of our grenade spawner class, I'm going to skip ahead to the good stuff and get the variables filled in. Inside of our update loop, we're going to want to check for a keyboard input to shoot our grenades. So we'll go ahead and use the get key down method, passing in key code E. Now the final thing this class needs to do is spawn the grenades. So we'll do this by creating a new method called spawn grenade. And within that method, I'm going to create a new game object variable where we're going to instantiate out the grenade prefab. So let's go ahead and do that by calling the instantiate method passing in our grenade prefab. We'll want to create that one at the spawn point transform position. And then we'll want to also pass in a quaternion identity. And then finally, we're going to have to apply a force to our grenade object. So we can do this by grabbing the grenade variable we just created and getting the rigid body component off of that one and then we'll call the add force method. We'll need to pass in the forward vector of the spawn point multiplied by the grenade force, making sure that the force mode is set to impulse. Now back in our Unity scene, I'm going to start out by creating the prefab of our grenade. So I'll create a sphere and scale it down. Then I'll add a rigid body to that one, making sure that the sphere collider is set to trigger. The final step I want to do is add a material to make the grenade look more like a grenade. So I've created a dark green material and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that one. With all of that out the way, our grenade prefab is ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and spice it up and make the grenade prefab look a little bit better. Feel free to get creative with this part. And with the grenade done, we'll make sure to make it a prefab and then we can go ahead and remove it from the scene. Next, we'll create an empty game object to represent the transform where we're going to be spawning the grenades from. So we'll go ahead and position it a little bit closer to his head so the grenades just spawn from maybe his torso area. And then I'll go ahead and add the grenade spawner script to my player game object. We'll want to link the transform where we're going to be spawning the grenades and also link the grenade prefab that we've created. Now, one thing I forgot to do was remove the colliders off the extra cubes I created. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now and also rotate out the grenade spawn point so that the grenades spawn on an angle. Now when we test our game, we can see that when we hit the E key, we spawn a bunch of grenades. And now it's time to get into the good stuff. So let's go ahead and make an explosion effect by creating a particle system. So let's set our duration to one and remove looping. Then we'll want to set our stop action to destroy. Next, I'm going to adjust the lifetime and start speed of our particles. A few of these values we might need to mess around with until we get something that looks good, but it's hard to visualize the final particle system until we've got a few of the other values in place. Now in our emissions tab, I'm going to set the rate over time to zero, and then I'm going to add a burst of 80 particles. Next, I'll be setting my shape to sphere to emulate an explosion. And then I'm going to go down to renderer and set the material to the default square sprite material. And then when we hit play on our particle effect, this is what we should be seeing. It's actually looking pretty good for an explosion, but I'm just going to go ahead and scale that one down a little bit to make it smaller. And that's actually looking pretty good. Now, one thing our effect is missing is some color. So I'm going to go ahead and tick the color over lifetime option. And then I'm going to mess around with some of these colors. I'm probably going to lerp it from maybe a red down to a orange. I think that'll look pretty good for an explosion. Maybe give it a yellow at the end there. And then I'm, I'm going to drag down the, the alpha slider to the end and make sure that we reduce the alpha 
so that we fade out towards the end of the lifetime. So the last thing I want to do is apply a random size over lifetime. So I'm going to go ahead and select random between two constants and then I'll maybe make my first one 4 and the next one 0 0.2. See how that looks. Maybe I'll reduce the first value down to 3. And I think that's actually looking pretty good. You can see now we've got a bit of variance in the size of our particles. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that game object to explode and we'll go and make that a prefab. So jumping back into the code, we're in our grenade class and I'll go ahead and add all those variables. So this should be everything we need to set up the functionality of our grenade. Now we'll want to create the first two methods of our class. The first of which being the explode method and the second one being called enable collider. So within this method we're going to get our sphere collider and set its trigger value to false. So we need to enable the collider after a short delay. We can do this by calling the invoke method and passing in the enable collider string. Let's go ahead and also add the call delay variable we've defined as the second argument in this method. Now we can go ahead and copy and paste this method passing in explode to explode the grenade after our explosion delay, which I've just changed to two seconds real quick. The next thing we'll do is get our explosion mechanics working. We'll need to get an array of all the colliders that the grenade hits when it explodes. So we can do this by using the physics overlaps veer method. We'll pass in our transform position and our explode radius as the arguments. Next we'll need to iterate through our array of colliders hit and we'll need to apply a force to each item in the collection. So let's go ahead and grab the rigid body off of the collider and then we'll want to go ahead and add an explosive force onto that. We'll add the explosion force as the first parameter in this method, followed by the transform position. Then we'll want to grab the explode radius. Then the next thing we'll pass in is the upwards modifier, and then finally the force mode, which will be impulse. And now for this next step, we're going to be applying damage to all the characters that were hit by the explosion. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this little code snippet, paste it in, and replace everything with character. Now instead of adding an explosive force, I'm just going to call the character and I'm going to call the take damage method. Where we'll need to pass in a damage amount, so let's go ahead and create a new variable for this. Now we're almost done with the logic of our grenade. The last few things I'm going to do is instantiate out the effect of the grenade explosion and then remove the grenade game object. So we can do this by calling the instantiate method and passing in our explosion effect prefab that we've created. We'll want to do that at the transform position with the quaternion identity. And then finally we'll also call the destroy method passing in our game object. Now just before we jump back into Unity, I'm going to quickly correct an error I made. I got a bit lazy with my null check, so let's just go and indent those as if statements here. So we'll want to say if rigid body is not equal to null, we can make this inline, and then let's remove that question mark. And let's do the same for our character. So as you can see, back in our Unity scene, it's super fun to play around with the new explosions we've just made. Some of the values might need to be tweaked so that they don't explode so hard, but that's something you can sort of play around with in your own games. So if you're enjoying these tutorials and you want to see more, leave a comment down below and let me know what tutorial you want to see in the next episode. Also, you can find all the project files on GitHub. A link for that will be in the description down below. If you're a beginner game developer and you want to learn how to make full games in Unity, you can check out my playlist on YouTube. You can find that one over here. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.